This is going to be part 12 of our series of tutorials for the terrain. And we just got to something pretty substantial, uh, which is also pretty brave to do. Uh, let me explain. The last thing we did was to change some of the uh, public parameters of the OVR player controller, uh, like we changed the slope limit to 90, and we changed um, our acceleration a little bit, and the jump force, and also we reduced the gravity. But speaking of jump, there is no button in the uh, Oculus controller that is configured to jump. Obviously, there's something about jumping in the script, but it's just not tied to anything. The function is not being called by anything. So we have to uh, tweak it. So we're up to step number 43. Time to add a jump. Open the OVR player controller script for editing. Now, what I would recommend is not just opening it, and here it is. The way we open it is pretty simple. OVR player controller. Here it is. Not the character controller, but the OVR player controller script. Open it as if we wrote it. As if it's just a regular script. And of course, it's going to open um, Visual Studio or whatever is designated as your um, code editor. It's not the longest script I've ever seen, but it's definitely scary. And I'm always afraid, and I have done it before, is mess it up. Now, I'm saying if I'm going to mess it up, this 700-line uh, or 600-line script, again, not the longest I've seen, but still pretty scary compared, you know, considering the fact I didn't write it, what I would do is, first of all, select all of it, Command-A uh, command on a Mac, Control-A on PC, uh, copy it, you know, the shortcut, and open some kind of like, you know, on the Mac it's text edit, on Windows might be a notepad, and paste just so I have a copy of the way it looks right now before I mess with it, just to ease my mind. And I'm going to, you know, of course, save it, and, you know, I already did, uh, for safekeeping. Then let's see what the instructions are. How do we change this? By the way, we can always get a fresh copy of it by reloading the Oculus package. Uh, so the danger is not that big. So let's look at the instructions. What do we have to do? We open it for editing. We find line 256 that says update movement, and we have to add something there. That's the core of the whole thing. It's an if. Let me copy it. In this case, I'm giving it to you for copying. And it becomes two, line 266. So let's find line 200 and 65 scrolling 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 here it is i actually already have it there so let me highlight this is what it looks like before i messed with it update movement Right after the function update movement, we are adding that line from the instructions and let's read what it says. If OVR input get down, or in other words, it, if it finds that it's been pressed on this frame, button one is the button that has the A letter on it on the right controller. That's the button that's, you know, the, the, the conventional button for jumping. There are two buttons on the right controller called A and B, and A is for jumping. Now, of course, if you want it to be a different button, then we can look through the um, support. Maybe I will upload that too to your course shell that shows you the mapping of the buttons. For instance, I think button two is the B and so on. Uh, but button one is the button that will cause a jump. So that's the first change we made. I put all those uh, comments here just to make it easier for me to find it when I'm scrolling. So it actually, there was an empty line there. It means I didn't even have to move anything else. If this button is pressed, call the function jump. Now, we didn't define a function jump, which means there is one already. We're going to find it and see where it is. So the function jump, if I highlight it, is actually found further down, way, way, way further down. somewhere close to the end of the script. I will find it. I probably have passed it already. Yep, 
Here it is. On line 507, a public bool, which is, you know, it's a, it's a function that returns a Boolean, uh, a function called jump. And it basically asks that if the controller is not grounded, then it gives it a throttle, you know, return false. What is that? Um, what is that there to do? To make sure that we, if we're already up in the air, if we're not grounded, we can't jump anymore. So in other words, if we are on the ground, we can jump. If we're already up in the air, we can't jump. And it basically adds a, lo uh, um, a local scale, lossy scale. It's a parameter in the script. Why? Which is the jump force. Here it is, times the jump force. This is why we made the jump force higher. And it gives us a big push up into the Y. So this is this function was there all along, only we, now we built a line that calls this function when button one, the A button on the right controller, is um, being pressed. And here it is on line 266. I'm gonna make one more modification because there's something in the script that prevents us from moving forward while we jump. So it's a total vertical jump. In other words, it jumps up and down. I want to be able to jump up. And while I'm in the air, I want to be able to push myself forward. In other words, jump over things. Jump forward and up and over things. To do that, it took me some time to figure out where it is. I'm going to make another change. And that's line 45. So we just did 44. We added this line on line um, 256. Let me just make sure that the numbers are right. No, 265 and 266. I have to change it. 265 and 266. After line 265, and it becomes 266. Yeah, I just messed, uh, messed up those two numbers. Um, I'm going to make sure you get the, the right guide by the time I upload it to the uh, course shell. Then this is the step that took me quite a lot of uh, finding. I said there's got to be something that prevents it from moving forward while we're in the air jumping. And I found that on line 348, there's if not controller is grounded. And again, let's find it. 348. 300 48 here it is this line did not have a comment this is the original script this line originally does exactly what they're this is their comment no positional movement if we are in the air but i'm saying i want to be able to move while in the air as if i had wings as if i had like you know like a rocket attached to me so all i did was to comment out line 348 that's it just Instead of when we're in the air, we cannot move, no positional movement. I can change it now to yes. Positional movement if we're in the air, because now move scale equals zero, zero means no movement we're in the air. If I disable it, then the throttle still works. The, uh, the thumbstick on the left controller, which is the one that moves us forward will still work. So again, the two main changes that we made in the script, they're really small. We added one line on 266, which is that if, this is the line we added, if the button one is pressed, call the function jump. It's actually the abbreviated version of the if statement. Um, so it's just a, just a one liner which you can copy and paste. And another change that you don't even have to copy and paste is to disable one line, and that was line 348. We disabled the no movement while we're in the air. So now we have movement while we're in the air. That way we can jump, and while we're in the air, we're gonna stay in the air quite a long time because we reduce the gravity, like there's no gravity. While we're up in the air, we will be able to jump pretty far forward. You can see it in demo in uh, video zero, where you can see me jump and move forward, which means I can jump over pretty tall things while I'm in the air. Um, going back to the tutorial, let's see if there's anything else before we can 
wrap this up. In the next part, I'm going to talk about wrapping this up, which is 46, 47, and 48.